up to this point, we've talked primarily about using fluxes in a synchronous way, which is certainly a use case, but it's really not the common use case. In order to be able to talk about the common use case, which has to do with concurrent operations and asynchronous operations, we're going to have to talk about concurrency operators and schedulers. So let's st start by talking about concurrency operators. So we're going to talk about a pair of concurrency operators that arrange to run other operators in designated threads and thread pools. And we're going to focus on the subscribe on and publish on operators. So let's start by talking about subscribe on. What subscribe on does is it arranges to run the subscribe, on subscribe, and request operators on the specified scheduler parameter. And the scheduler parameter indicates what thread or threads to perform the operator on. You can see here, we'll talk, there's a lot of things to talk about with schedulers. And it returns the flux that requests the asynchronous processing. So what comes back from subscribe on is a flux whose data will be processed by subsequent operators in the designated scheduler context, which could be a single thread, could be a pool of thread, could be various things. The semantics of subscribe on are a little bit unusual. And that's because when you place the subscribe on operator in a chain of methods that are part of a flux pipeline, that will impact the execution context of subsequent on next, on error, and on complete signals. So here's a very simple example that we'll take a look at when we get into the case study where we're going to generate values from 1 to S max iterations. And we're going to subscribe this to run on a new parallel scheduler, which we create, which we call publisher. So we're going to publish on that scheduler. And then we're going to start generating some values that will essentially be a random big integer, which is in the range of some lower bound plus uh, some random value. And we're going to do a bunch of stuff to it, all which will take place in the new publisher scheduler. And then we're going to be, can emit the values here with subscribe. And then when we're done, we're going to shut down the publisher by uh, disposing of it. So we'll, we'll talk about this. We'll explain how all these different things work here shortly. Note, however, that subscribe on can appear anywhere in the chain. Here we put it the second one, but you could also put it right before the end or anything in the middle. And it would have exactly the same effect. That's part of what makes this a little bit weird. The other thing that makes it a little bit weird is when subscribe on occurs, that influences things that come before it in the chain as well, which is definitely a bit unusual. So we'll, we'll talk more about this as we go through this. Now, just to be even more complicated, if a publish on operator appears later in the chain, I don't show that here, but if publish on was to take place, say, before do finally or something like that, then in that case, that will once again change the thread to context where the rest of the operators in the chain below publish on will execute, and publish on can appear multiple times. So this quickly starts to get very convoluted. The convolution started with RxJava, was it its subscribe on operator, which works the same way that subscribe on works in flux. So that's subscribe on, as idiosyncratic as it is. Subscribe on really only makes sense when you start looking at more detailed examples, which we will do shortly. The publish on operator is a little bit more clear. It runs the on next, on complete, and on error hook methods in the supplied scheduler parameter. Again, you give it a scheduler, and that indicates what thread or threads to perform the operator on. It returns the flux that requests asynchronous processing. And Mercifully, the publish on semantics are pretty straightforward. So the way publish on works is it says from publish on downwards, not before, but from downwards, then go ahead and run the operators that occur here on the, in the scheduler context indicated by the parameter passed to publish on. In this case, we create another new parallel scheduler that which we call subscribe, subscriber. And so we're going to make some things that are going to run in a publisher, which is going to be made by this create method we'll talk about here shortly. But then everything after publish on 
will run in a different thread. So we're gonna have a publisher thread and a subscriber thread, and they're gonna be two different threads. So this is a bit more coherent, a bit more sensible than subscribe on. Up until the point yet another publish on occurs. So when you have publish on, then things run in that, that scheduler context. And if you do another publish on, that'll run in yet a different context. As a general rule of thumb, try not to get too carried away to have too many thread contexts for a single stream because it tends to make things run slower than you might expect because of the context switching overhead and the memory management overhead and the data movement overhead and the synchronization overhead and all these other sources of overhead. Interactions between publish on and subscribe on are a bit convoluted. You can read more about them here at this link. As a general rule of thumb, try not to get too carried away. Usually what I'll do is I will have something that makes a, some kind of emitter that runs in one context, as you can see here, for example, flux create, make async flux sync. There's gonna be a call to subscribe on there. And then I switch to the context with this subscriber here. I would not do, I would do it more like, more like this and not have the two publish ons. So that's, that's a common way to do it if you're going to have a differentiation between publishers and subscriber threads at all. Okay, so Rx Java has something called observe on that works the same as publish on. Why they chose different names is one of life's mysteries, to quote, paraphrase Tom, Tom Cruise from Top Gun Maverick. So that's the end of the overview of concurrency operators. You will have to understand concurrency operators in order to do some of the upcoming assignments.